at this point, Martell's gonna do anything to make her look like the bad guy. My love's direct and lady girl from on the way we have culture conversation and community and in today's video i'm coming to you all with a owned networks okay love and marriage huntsville season four episode three the name of this episode is called read it and weep okay so the episode kicks off with marceau and maurice sitting down to pretty much discuss their little meeting that they had on tuesday which uh, which was you know their little sit down to discuss the infamous picture at this point that marceau had posted on instagram and Maurice is just like, I didn't get the apology that I wanted. You know what I mean? And, and at this point, it's looking like he probably won't get that. You know, Maurice is just like, you know, Marcel is still joking. He doesn't get this, you know, the severity of this. And I'm like, where is he joking at? The, uh, listen, the truth come out on a joke. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. It's not giving joke over here to us. Marceau says, I'll give Kimmy an apology, but I don't know about you. And I, I can kind of see why he feels like he doesn't really owe him an apology because like you know all he did was post the picture had he just told the truth then he, it wouldn't even require an apology that's a sticky situation but Marceau is definitely enjoying this um power that he has how much control he has had over this situation how he has like inserted the truth so to speak and you could just see it all over his smug face and I think I can kind of see his perspective of always seeming and looking like the bad guy and now he's still the bad guy he's still a villain but you know what i mean it's like yeah i'm not the only one you know that's why maurice uh marceau posted that picture so i get this whole little coy thing well everybody on the stage knew but the world did it and you're on a world stage or i don't want to say the world but you get what i'm saying you're on national television martel shows up and they immediately drag martel into their shenanigans and he's like martel what did you think martel's like well at first i thought it was a joke but then I started looking deeper into it and like I didn't know if it was going to cause any discord in between your family and between your marriage and you know I really don't want that to happen to me and I, that was just you know a little ridiculous to me. You can tell that Martel was looking at them side eye and sideways. Maurice was just happy to have an ally in that moment because Marcel ain't hearing it. Marcel you know doubles down and reiterates that I'm not going to be a punching bag to anybody you know what i mean and martel says you know what that's what i wanted to talk to you guys about or really specifically marcel i feel like at the reunion y'all were giving big lou you know a little bit of a hard way to go and marcel says whoa 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 wait a second you know slow pump the brakes because tisha and i have been married this whole time we have caught a lot of flack about our relationship and our marriage and here he is he's new to the group he doesn't know me he doesn't know my wife and he's passing judgment as to like what we should do as our marriage as if our marriage is felon and like marcel said and like we all know everybody got something to say about their marriage so i understand that perspective of who are you to come up into my house and give me unsolicited advice you know martel kind of hears it but he's just like you know some people don't know when they overstep their boundaries so it's okay to to tell that to tell that to that person and voice that opinion i was just like yeah i agree with that and i'm like that's the soundest advice um i've heard from martel since whenever marcel said he doesn't feel like he should but he will have a sit down to discuss and the next thing we have uh big blue and tiffany and they're supposed to be fake installing comcast girl xfinity live uh whatever they got down there and um, they just start talking about the uh, pajama party that Mel had. K Tiffany says that, you know, she wanted to pull Kimmy to the side and kind of just touch base with her after the reunion and, you know, kind of get a gauge to see where she was at. And she's like, as soon as her and I kind of got off to, you know, we were on understanding terms or at least common grounds, Mel and Stormy, Stormy came around and she's asking me, though I still work for the Chambers of Commerce, and they kind of do a flashback and she's like that's just like asking me something about when i was 12 well five and 12 were different and they were all looking like oh you trying to be smart it was just like they just didn't land well at all um you know everybody can't share everybody don't know how to do that so you need to figure it out you need to figure it out quickly miss uh <laughs> tiffany and i do want to just say here that stormy although stormy walked off and was like girl this girl's crazy sam whatever it is that she said stormy you don't know her you're only going off of what you hear from mel and from what i can see then it must be from what you see on television so you're coming in almost like a fan and you're expectating and you're giving your really really strong um opinions on people that you really don't truly know 
so I'm kind of trying to make up my mind about Stormy. I mean, I feel like she's going to hold, keep the girls honest. And, you know, she doesn't mind holding someone's feet to the fire. But that whole situation with Kimmy, I just felt like, not Kimmy, Tiffany was a little misplaced. Because, like, who are you again? Lou mentions that, you know, him and Marcel are going to have a sit down, a one-to-one. -one. Well, first, Tiffany was like, oh, well, you know, are you guys going to do a one-to-one -one thing? And he was just like, yeah, I think that that's fine. Because Martel was telling me, you know, he didn't really appreciate how things went at the reunion. Neither did I. And, you know, Big Lou started doing all this huffing and puffing about to blow the house down. Girl, I don't even know what he was talking about. I ain't even about to get into it because it's just too much. Um, <laughs> but... You know, he's doing his little one to uh, Tiffany invites herself and say, maybe we can do like a double date. Maybe you should have just let the men talk and get that squared away first. But, you know, she she doing her. Big Lou pretty much just says, you know, if you want to throw drinks, we can throw drinks. If you want to throw down, we can throw down. He's like, so do you think you guys are going to get physical at all? He was just like, oh, no, not at all. He was like, she was like, yeah, babe, you're too old for that. First of all, ma'am, I would never be, you know, I know you probably meant it in a playful way, but she made that little, you know, that little snide remark about the, the wiring. Did y'all peep that? Now she's like, my he too old. Let me find out, Big Lou. You better be walking on eggshells around Miss Tiffany because we all know she liked to move around. And the next thing we have Melody and her beautiful daughter Mariah and they are reading lines to one another Melanie is uh, or Melody Melody is you know doing her little scene she's trying to land an acting gig and you know good for you Melody you know chase your dreams girl spent all this time with this man making these babies you know you reclaiming reclaiming my time and go ahead and do it and do whatever it is that do whatever it is that you need to do. I like that she's incorporating her daughter and she sits down and she talks to her daughter. She says, do you know why mommy works so much? And she's like, oh, so we can go to cool places. Not only do we go to cool places, but I want you to know that mommy needs to be independent enough so that way I can make my own decisions for my life and for you. And eventually you're gonna be a grown up one day and I want you to do that. So that moment was beautiful to see that type of interaction and that dialogue happening, real conversation, but on her level, on the kid's level, and it was a beautiful exchange. She's like, I want my daughter to know that I had to walk away from a situation that didn't serve me anymore. You get what I'm saying? And you may have to do the same thing. And this is why mommy is working so much. Also to put it into perspective of, you know, if she's a baby girl, she's like, oh, mommy's always going, mommy's always going. At least not to justify it, but to at least have some sort of understanding as to why she's gone. It's not like, oh, she's gone and she's doing this. Mommy might be gone, but she's gone for me. So that way I can do X, Y, Z, or that we can go X, you know, have X, whatever, whatever. She seems like she's smart enough en enough and old enough to understand what is actually taking place. So I think Melody is really responsible for having that conversation. And listen, y'all, even if you, you can't afford to take your kids to wherever the case, it's still okay to have that conversation. Look, mommy's working two jobs and I gotta do what we gotta do so we can have a roof over our head and we can have a safe a safe place to be. Something as simple as that. And you know, it's unfortunate sometimes that you may be in that situation, but be honest with y'all kids. You don't have to tell them, oh, this motherfucker. You ain't even gotta get into all that. Talk to them on their level, period. Martel is meeting up with his mom to go over um, his little sweet, his premium sweet red wine. How many times did he say that in that scene, girl? Anyway, the mom's getting drunk. He likes the wine. She likes the wine. I don't even wanna spend too much time on it because it is what it is. It was what it was. Mommy is tipsy. Mommy says, Oh, well, you know, you're a good person at the end of the day, Marta. And I can't believe you're going to name this premium sweet wet wine. Oh, girl, that's a tongue twister. Premium sweet wet wine. I still can't do it. You're going to name this wine after Big Mama and them. And I'm just so happy and so proud of you. And you know, you was a good person. You've always been a good person, Martel. You know, you hit rock bottom, but you on, you on your way up, baby. Girl... That's her black king. That's all I'm gonna say. The next thing we have Tisha and Marceau and they have their kids. Can I just say that Tisha looked absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh, she was stunning. Mama was stunning. That straight with the middle part. Girl, a straight, she had leave out. She kept the old school with the leave out. Mm. Girl, I miss them. I miss them so ins. I, you know, y'all know if you don't know, I'm locked. So you know, so ins are over for me. But girl, that is such a look for me, girl. I, <laughs> she looked beautiful. Anyway, the kids talk about where they want to go to Africa, um, and which country they want to go to because people always talk about Africa as it's just oh, it's Africa. Like what part? What country? Um. Anyway, so that was a cute little yin yin yin. And then they start talking about, you know, the conversation that he had with Maurice. And then they start mentioning like this whole secret apartment business. He said, well, if I really did have a secret apartment, 
um, you know, my, my license plate has my name on it. You get what I'm saying? Somebody would have saw it. He had the secret. If I was at the secret apartment, if I was at the secret apartment, you know, if I was over there, I would, if somebody would have seen my car over there and then, and then Tisha just looked like over there. And then he was like, yeah, you know, we're good over here. We're big good. You know what I mean? And she's like, yeah, we good. He was like, we good, right? If you got a question and you know you're not really good. And it's just like giving, we're doing this for the cameras. I don't really feel this way, but I have to go along with it because, you know, this is my, my family. And if that's the case, Tisha just stand in it. Because then you look stupid. Then you look less stupid. You look stupid trying to play like, yeah, we okay. But you're looking at him like, and you and he's blatant and he's saying things that don't even add up and the next thing we have kimmy and maurice they're getting ready for that honeymoon and in this honeymoon girl they they she's pulling out lingerie you know she like a good little piece of lingerie and they just talk about the pajama party the pajama party where tisha was just the topic of conversation destiny wasn't invited and kiki was there y'all i know i missed that episode but y'all that episode was a hot mess like the cousin that just show you right there. They had a cute little scene though because, you know, he was just like, oh, well, I had the lingerie right now. Let's get our vacation started now. I think that was cute, sexy, and playful. They seem to be moving in a better direction. And the next scene we have Martel and he's getting ready for the book signing. So basically, long story short, Martel has scheduled a book signing on a weekend that the kids are not his. So, you know, he's getting it all together. He's like, I've been calling Mel trying to see if, you know, if she's gonna be able to make it the, you know the kids to be here they're supposed to be reading the uh book to everybody and i'm so proud of my kids and you know there are authors now and people think that it's so unattainable and they can actually do it long story short now martel is going to do anything that he can to make melody the bad guy and that's exactly what it seemed to be so if people are coming in they're like oh well um where's the babies at where's the kids oh you know their mom you know that's just the force why did you schedule it on a weekend that you know, it wasn't like it was jam-packed and you couldn't cancel tickets or refund people or whatever the case. Mar Mar Martel is so controlling, it's just continuing to show. Melody, keep moving, keep moving, keep grooving and striving. That's all I got for y'all. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe, share if you care. I really appreciate you, girl. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.